Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Well, welcome to the I Make Key Hong Kong branch webinar on the title of Combating COVID-19, Shenzhen Buds Group's Experience. Now, before we start this webinar, uh, there are a few house rules that I'd like to address you beforehand. Well, first of all, uh, the attendees uh, must be on the mute mode. And in fact, uh, we've all set you to the mute mode. And uh, if you have any question to raise, please use the Q&A function and address it to all panelists. And also, as far as the attendance certificates is concerned, uh, we will uh, issue you a certificate provided that you attend the entire webinar and you join the, the webinar using the same name and email address registered. And uh, recording and photo taking, especially on the presentation materials, are not allowed. It. So the following session will be uh, chaired by our Hong Kong branch activity subcommittee chairman, Mr. Alex Locke who will introduce us, the speakers tonight, and moderate the question and answer session. Now I pass on the time to Alex. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for Wang Hei for the house rule. So tonight we will have two speakers, Mr. Zhou Ma and Ms. Haley Alam. Zhou is an urban pioneer with over 30 years of international experience. He is deputy manager, sorry, he is deputy general manager in Shenzhen Bus Group, part of the international development, procurement, marketing, taxi operation, advertising, and training. A major, a major accomplishment in joining Shenzhen Bus is the successful procurement of over 6,000 electric buses and 4,800 electric buses, resulting in Shenzhen Bus Group becoming the first fully and largest electric power of the transportation operator in the world and winning the Outstanding Achievement Award at the UITP Global Summit in Stockholm in 2019. He is the current chair of the UITP Taxi and Share Riding Committee and he is regularly invited as a guest speaker in many global public transportation conferences and forums. And Haley, she is the head of the International Development Department at Shenzhen Bus Group. She is in charge of international business development branding, procurement, and advertisement. Haley is a passionate about public uh, policy and public transportation role in creating a greener urban environment, particularly after Shenzhen Bus Group become the first fully and largest electric power public op uh, vehicle operator in the world. Before joining uh, Shenzhen Bus Group, she, uh, Haley has worked for the uh, United Nations Development Program, Nikisi, and international organizations in cross-border development projects across the United States, China, Latin America, and Southeast Asia. Now, let me hand over to Joe and Haley, please. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Joe Ma here. Hallie here. So, uh, we're... Good evening here from Shenzhen. Uh, just, uh, I'm going to let Hali talk about the, the, the main sort of like uh, the introduction of the, the, main, the main sort of content for tonight. Uh, but I'll just do a brief introduction, but I'm, I'm here. So any, well, I'll join in with the question and answers. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Shenzhen, uh, Shenzhen is a city of 23 million. Uh, there are altogether 22,000 uh, 16,000 buses in, in Shenzhen, of which uh, we, we run 6,000 of those. And there are also 22,000 taxis in Shenzhen. And we have, uh, the company has about uh, almost 5,000 of those. And all our taxis, all the taxis in, and, and buses in Shenzhen are electric, uh, been electrified since 2017. So uh, within our company, we employ 30,000 people. So it's a, it's a major operation. We have buses, we have taxis, 
uh, we have other types of vehicles. We also have uh, cross boundary buses between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Uh, we have uh, uh, logistic vehicles. We also have a. Uh, um, we also operate apart from operating in, in Shenzhen between Hong Kong and Shenzhen and Shenzhen. We also operate in Shenyang and, and other cities. So um, maybe at that at this point, I'll pass it on to Hali, and she will go through the sort of like what we what we've done over the whole kind of uh, pandemic. Uh, right from sort of like a, the, the end of uh, towards the middle of January, uh, right to what we're doing at, at the moment. And then Harley will also go through some of the, I think specifically the technologies that we've been using in terms of uh, how we combat uh, uh, coronavirus, how we protect our staff, and how we uh, sanitize our vehicles, and also uh, some of the other sort of like. Uh, advanced kind of uh, technologies that we use, such as QR code for tra tracing our past passengers and stuff like that. So I'll pass it on to Hali, but um, I'm here, so I'll, 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 I'll tip in now. Hali. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us. Uh, I think it's uh, our pleasure to share um, what we have done in Shenzhen, uh, being one of the earliest region that was impacted by coronavirus, uh, similarly to Hong Kong. And um, so just to give, uh, you know, for those of you who are not familiar with what's going on on the ground in Shenzhen and China right now, this is a situation where, um, so we went into a major lockdown in the entire country from January to March uh, around Chinese New Year. And um, essentially, uh, some of the public transport uh, operations were shut down across the country, but these were all decisions made by municipal governments. And in the Shenzhen government's case, uh, they've decided not to shut down the public transportation. Uh, so we still kept uh, some of our operations and lines running to deliver essential uh, service healthcare workers and food delivery services and, uh, and for goods as well. So um, this is sort of the tally that we're looking at with the confirmed cases in, in the major cities in China, including Shenzhen, Shanghai, and Beijing. And um, uh, luckily, unluckily, so through very stringent measures, uh, we have not seen a local transmitted case in the past 89 days, I believe. And um, we, uh, and Today, I, I will talk a bit more about, you know, as public transport operators, what are the measures that we have taken from the very beginning when um, nobody knew what was uh, what was happening. So for the ridership, we have, this is the latest stat, uh, this is the stats that we saw, observed in April, but from January to February, because of the drastic lockdown that we, um, have put in place that uh, most of the public transport uh, ridership has decreased by more than 90%. And uh, a lot of our buses were empty. And for us, we have put in place a measure where we kept our bus load capacity at only 50% of our normal load. So uh, normally if the bus can take, uh, can carry about 50 people, then uh, we're only carrying around 25 passengers. So. And um, tax, our taxi ridership was more heavily impacted because the taxi industry is mostly served. Majority of the revenue comes from a lot of the nightlife and, uh, and that services entertainment um, hours, especially, you know, off work. And um, so, so as Joe has mentioned, we not only run around 7,000 buses. We also around 6,000 taxis, which that part of the revenue was severely impacted because that part of the operation is commercially run. So um, we will also talk a bit more about what are the measures that we have taken on, on our taxis. And um, for both Shenzhen and some of the other cities, including the epicenter of the outbreak for Wuhan, um, they've mobilized around 600 buses every day during the peak of the outbreak to uh, trans, trans, uh, transfer medical service professionals and also um, to deliver goods for community uh, services because everyone was put in a lockdown. So when you were not leaving your houses, 
all of the count compounds were managed by a group of community workers where they deliver your food and your goods up to your door so that you don't need to leave the house to ensure the safety of the public. And for us, we also run on-demand buses uh, with, uh, this is a joint venture that we, that Shenzhen Bus Group has established with uh, Didi, which is the ride hailing app, uh, the ride hailing company in China, where we deliver um, passengers point to point from residential area to uh, CBD area. And we have been observing the traffic, uh, the, the passenger load going back up from 10% uh, in January to around 50 to 60% in March. And now we are essentially back to 90 to 100% during peak hour. So for some of the emergency measures that we have taken, one of the key things that I think was um, that we put in place a emergency working group the next day, uh, the day after uh, Shenzhen went into lockdown, which was around uh, January 20th, I believe. And this working group consisted of um, people from, uh, from our procurement, from our um, technology group, IT group, uh, management from uh, operations, et cetera. And these key personnel meet every day to uh, where they're actively monitoring what's happening on the ground, uh, what are the emergency procurement that we did to um, buy masks, disinfectants, gloves, all of the PPEs that were required to protect our staff um, during the lockdown, especially for our drivers. And um, since it was Chinese New Year then, uh, a lot of our drivers were actually out of town. Uh, so we had to put in place a 14-day mandatory uh, self-isolation period for the staff and the drivers that were out of town during the time when they come back. And we have provided dormitory and food delivery services for them uh, just to ensure that, uh, you know, once that they are out of that they're taken care of, and once they, that they're out of the quarantine, um, that they would be in good place to come back to work. And um, so all our drivers and um, staff are required to wear masks uh, in public, especially when they're uh, at work on service driving the buses. And um, in Shenzhen, the general public also I would say 99% of them wears masks whenever we're out in public as well. Uh, similarly to Hong Kong, I think. So um, one of the one, uh, one of the important measure I think is also on contact tracing, where we implemented a QR code system that is oh, right here. So um, whenever passengers get on board on the buses, that uh, they're, re they're recommended to scan a QR code that is linked with their payment system. So either, either that would be WeChat or Alipay, uh, which is widely used in, uh, in China as, you know, most of us use um, the QR code scan whenever we're out for purchasing and, um, daily and other daily activities. So once the passengers board the train, they're required to scan the code, which uh, will ask you about your name and telephone number. This is uh, this we tell our passengers this is to ensure their safety. Where if in if uh, we discover later that there are patients that uh, were infected with the virus that has shared the same vehicle or similar tracing. Um, location with them, we can track, uh, we can contact them immediately. So um, I think we have around more than 90% of our passengers still can scan a code, fill out their info. And um, this has helped tremendously for us to track, um, to keep uh, everyone safe. So um, we also keep all temperature check points at all our depots, all our buildings as well, uh, because as Joe has mentioned, we have around 30,000 employees, which is a big operation. And for all our canteens and cafeteria, 
uh, we have implemented sort of a management system where people are um, recommended to dying uh, to dying alone and uh, sort of one meter at least one meter apart for the table setting and that um, people are wearing masks uh, a lot when they're eating uh, for, uh, and that we are separating the dining hours for all employees as well. This is to sort of decrease social contact and um, just to ensure that people are still um, keeping at a safe, safe distance. And um, so as we go back to work in starting from March, a lot of our work start to shift focus to um, to protecting uh, sort of the imported cases and uh, the other patients that are coming in from border or are coming out on uh, borders from Shenzhen to Hong Kong, including Shenzhen Bay, uh, Hukin, et cetera. And we have an emergency working group in place that dispatches these vehicles, including drivers that are in full PPE gears to transfer um, passengers that come in from the border after they get tested immediately to the hospital if you know there were any any uh, likely cases and for our taxis we have also implemented uh, a safety screen that uh, between our driver's seat and our passenger seat uh, which is to sort of decrease the contact between the drivers and the passengers where you know when you when you first get on you scan the code, and um, on the screen it is also shown that when was the last time the vehicle was being uh, in, disinfected and clean. And for us, the buses we require it to be disinfected after each service trip. And for taxis, um, as the similar uh, measure as well. So this is I think the communication is a key point where. We need to keep our passengers notice that um, we, as the operator, is taking the safety and disinfectant very seriously. As I think this would be the new normal for the foreseeable future. As um, you know, we have observed that there is has been a decrease in uh, ridership and public transportation across the world, uh, especially after the pandemic, and most people have opted to take their cars or bikes or walk, et cetera, uh, just because there is still a fear for crowded space. So I think um, a transparent and clear messaging in showing that these are the measures that we have taken are very important to keep our um, passenger back up. And uh, we have since, um, everyone was in a lockdown in the beginning of the outbreak, it was important for us to give our drivers and our staff the proper training uh, to protect themselves and also you know, to, to service these essential workers. So we developed um, online training courses through um, our in-house app where it tells them uh, the guides to sort of um, Oh, where, how to wear PPEs and how, what are the frequency and the methods to do disinfection, uh, use some of the key uh, technologies that we just procured. And um, the, we also use this platform to push the notification to our riders and uh, visitors about line changes, route change, and also time services. So, um, and we also have a group of um, therapists that are online for, uh, that consults our employees that were stuck in Wuhan and Hubei at the time for, um, for, for the foreseeable future. So I think these were all very important that you're take, we're taking care of our employees. And, um, and I, I think these are still of the methods and systems that we will keep in place for the foreseeable future. And so uh, for sanitization, as I just mentioned earlier, uh, we our buses 
are required to get disinfected after each service trip. And we have been trialing with multiple different devices. So right now we're still using the quite basic ones where uh, your normal uh, alcohol disinfectant. Uh, and but now we're, we're trialing with the nanotechnology disinfectant and also dispensary. Uh, the suspensory system where it, you know, you put it on each buses and it takes them around uh, five to seven days so you can keep it and then uh, they will refill it afterwards, which uh, we can do the remote control through our uh, control center. So this is just on a few buses where, where we're trialing it. Uh, just supplement a bit on this point. Uh, it, we, we have this auto dispenser. What it does is it's, it's all like a dispenser, H2O2 uh, kind of a, uh, spray in, in, in the buses. And it, it covers for about 95%, you know, it, it, this, this, uh, uh, this dispenser is supposed to cover, uh, estimate to cover about 95% of all the bus and kills up to 95% of the germs within the bus. Uh, this is a remote control sense uh, uh, sanitizing uh, equipment. Uh, we've been sold that in, in some of our buses for, for trying purposes. Uh, so uh, if this is proved to be successful, uh, we'll be implementing this for, uh, throughout all our, all our entire fleet. Uh, and um, this is something that we're, we're, we are co-joining with, a, with a, a tech company uh, in, in pushing for this technology. Yeah, and for our, some of our taxi services, because uh, we have seen a drastic decline in the revenue share for our taxi services, they've started running, uh, uh, diversifying some of the delivery services. So, uh, for example, we have partnered with um, SF Express, uh, so where some of their goods uh, would also be put in our taxi uh, the trunk in, in the back where our drivers can uh, also serve the delivery service uh, carriers as well. And um, we also rolled out a blood don like a free transfer service for blood donors uh, that's in partnership with the hospital because uh, we have seen uh, an increase uh, for, for need for blood donors and a shortage, particularly during COVID. So uh, even now, uh, that service is still in full running and um, it's just giving you free rides and, and pamphlets on information for blood donors and our drivers can take, take them to the designated hospital as well. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, sort of, I think the active monitoring for the entire bus speed uh, operations and also for us because we run and we run a pure electric uh, bus fleet and a pure electric taxi fleet. It's uh, it's essential for us to be actively monitoring our battery level and um, you know any and if there is any emergency that happens on the road, we, we can quickly dispatch uh, dis uh, additional vehicles, uh, especially for in, in concerning the capacity issues during the pandemic. Uh, so we have an intelligent operation system uh, that is sort of a centralized platform. We have it in the HQ and uh, with subsidiary companies uh, that have their each uh, control center as well. So we have uh, seven cameras on each of our buses that, uh, that reflect real time uh, footages where we can access here uh, in case there is an emergency as well. I've talked a bit about this earlier. Uh, yeah, so I think this is sort of a very brief overview on some of the measures that we have taken and uh, just an overview of some of our services. And we're happy to answer some additional questions that you can have, uh, that you will have.
Well, thank you very much for Joe and Haley for the informative presentation on combating COVID-19. So we will now have a Q&A session. So uh, next slide, please. As you have been told in the beginning of the seminar, the microphone is you need to work the Q&A to us. So, um, so for the instruction for the Q&A. The instruction for Oh, for, for us or for my? I don't think I have that. Uh, should be the first one. Oh, I see. Anyway. Oh, maybe. No, no, I don't think we have. Oh, oh okay. I have that one, that one, that one. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the slide, you can see. Mm -hmm. Is it this one, actually? Mm -hmm. Is it this one? No. I think I can go deeper. Like Anyway, anyway, so just in a, uh, you could ask the question. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the slide I want. So on the slide, you can see, take the page on Q&A or the chat box, choose all the panelists so that I'll start to see the questions together and then type your questions and take them. So I would then read out the questions since we have limited time. So we could allow some couples of questions only and we may combine our responses if the questions are look-alike. So check. Other question. Uh, so we have one question. So mm -hmm. um, the question is: Any staff got infected? And okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we did have a couple of staff that came back from from Hubei, Hubei area. Yeah. Uh, they came back and then we suspected they they, they well they, they they did have a test and one of them was proved to be positive. And then uh, we so straight away we we uh, we put put that person into uh, isolation. Uh, so we did have two cases. Uh, one was two suspected cases. One was uh, proven to be positive. positive. Yeah. And we also carried one passenger uh, who was later to be found to be uh, you know uh, positive. And then straight away we used the tracing system to to trace all the previous passengers with all the, all the passengers subsequently. Within that vehicle as well, and 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 then they were they were informed of to, to go to do the testing uh, by 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 the government, and also um, our driver was also went 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 for a test and was proved to be negative. Okay, so, so here's a follow up question. So what is the huh? contact tracing plan? So how do you trace uh, the those infected? Um, so actually, we put their mask uh, on the bus and our taxi. So just in the cases where people were not wearing masks, uh, which happens quite rarely, uh, then the driver will actually hand out an extra mask. I don't think we've seen people yeah. who just blatantly refuse to put on masks. I think those cases are quite rare. But in, in those cases, our drivers will hand you one. And Contact tracing is done by the bus company, but not. But so we we work in conjunction with both the transport bureau, so transport authority in Shenzhen, and these data. Uh, if you know, in in the case of where they have discovered uh, positive cases, uh, they hand it to the uh, health uh, to the health protection uh, bureau in Shenzhen as well. So we do the app and the sort of the tracing input for uh, for for the information, but in they have access. Okay. So the contracting is done by. So you know when <laughs> sending, Oh, that's a good question. You know, you know when Shenzhen government will lift up the <laughs> lift the compulsory quantity. I will be asking that. I've been. I'm asking that question every day because we, I'm from Hong Kong. We are and, asking that question. And I've been here. I've been stuck here for four, four months. So half the week. 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I'm asking that question also, but uh, we don't know yet. The short, the short answer to that is we, we have, don't know. We, we have no idea. idea. Yeah. Supposedly, uh, we heard it's going to be in the first June. week or, or first or second week of June, but uh, so far there's no confirmation yet. But hopefully that will happen soon. Okay. So, uh, next question, Stuart. Um, uh, so, uh, they want to ask if you uh, use, use, use the monitor system for testing tests. So, will it cause any concern? Okay, privacy is something that, uh, I mean, they, 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 we ask them voluntarily. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not, they, we, we don't enforce that, that, that rule. Uh, it's something that is uh, done in a, in a voluntary basis. And in fact, in China and in, in Shenzhen, and in, in Shenzhen in, in China, uh, people are so used to the idea of uh, using QR codes. I mean, you use QR code for drugs, for, for, to go shopping, you use QR code to order meals, you use QR code for, for uh, you know, like a delivery of stuff. And, you know, people are so used to that, the idea of using QR code and sharing the information. Uh, uh, I don't think, I mean, in terms of privacy, of course, our information is not released to 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 the, to, the, to, the, to any to the public. In the, in the, it's not in the in the public domain. Uh, we keep all the all the data uh, in house. Uh, in, in in this case, in in in, in during during this this pandemic, uh, uh, we the information is also shared with the health health authority, of course. Uh, so. Uh, so you mean that uh, uh, well. Uh, all the information are con the information is all connected, right? Uh, it's connected to the to the government, uh, connected to the transport bureau, con connected to the uh, to to the health bureau. Uh, you know, so in, it it's all within the kind of government system. Uh, initially, we did have our own QR code system, but uh, the, the the problem with having just our own QR code system, uh, we will only be able to trace passengers. Uh, uh, that taken out our, our vehicles, and they, and they cannot tra trace beyond that particular passenger. So uh, I think a week after we pushed out our QR code, government also introduced a QR code, which which is then commonly used by by everybody in Shenzhen, and even within all the residential neighborhoods, within all the major kind of shopping centers, uh, we all share the same QR code. Well, it's sort of a help. Code that mm -hmm. you show uh, where they have color coded green, red, uh, etc. Where Amber. you know when you are when you're going to airports, taking flights uh, in China, where they uh, and it, this is in February and March. I believe now uh, the rules have changed. Uh, I've just taken a flight last week and no one has checked the, the code from me. So uh, this is all case that varies by city, and I think in our experience is most important that. We tell the passengers that this is not concerning. We are want well, we're looking for your information. It's for your own safety and health. That if you want it to be contact immediately when there is a potential risk, you mm -hmm. you might want to put down your phone number. So it's sort of that understanding where people would voluntarily share their information. So let's say the presentation you said. Uh, uh, the passengers are required to wear masks to get on board. So if a passenger is supposed to put on a mask and demand to get on board, so what do you do? What what measures do you, you have? Yes, well, we can refuse a ride if they don't, if they don't yeah. wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. The, the drivers right. can refuse a ride. Yeah. Um, the next question. Uh, so for the carbon disinfection, so what technology has Either and which one is the most effective? Well, we don't know yet because we, we you know, like uh, initially we used uh, the very conventional method of using alcohol, alcohol-based kind of a sanitization uh, method, and we found that uh, after a while it, it starts to, you know, the some of the metal we're seeing, you know, the, the sort of like the start of the metal fatigue. Uh, from, so we we we're now using this uh, this new the dispenser which H two O two. I don't know what it is. I'm not a sci I'm not a, a chem sort of that. But it's a new technology, and uh, we're trying that. Uh, we also look at uh, uh, how you mentioned uh, nanotechnology, the nano spray. The nano spray. Uh, 
but it, that's quite expensive and it has to be done after, well, after maybe the effectiveness is about uh, uh, two months or something like that and you have to do it all over again. Uh, and we've also looked at I mean, ultra, ultraviolet light I've seen here. We've not tried the ultraviolet light because uh, that would require the buses. I mean, at the moment, our buses are running uh, kind of like a, uh, during peak hours, the, the, the sort of peak hour, peak vehicle demand is, is more, more or less, in, in our case, it's about uh, 95 up to over 95%. So we really can't afford our to have our buses to be stopped at at at, at the terminus for too long for the for the for the for the uh, what you call it, uh, for the ultra light uh, ultra ultra what you call ultraviolet light uh, treatment. So um, so we're we're using the spray for for uh, we're trialing with this spray for now. But as I said, this is only a trialing stage. So talking about the human resources. So do you have any quick words for plans or like a business continuity plan? So if there's a uh, how many percent of the staff is on sick leave, so you will shut down the operations and vice versa, you will resume the bus service to normal. Sorry, I see that thing. Was that question? Is that, uh, Has it resumed uh, to normal? Was that the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Resume to normal or if there's so many staff is on sick leave or call sick leave. So what would you do? So how many percent of staff so uh, you would shut down the operation? Uh, at the beginning, uh, sorry, during during the, the lunar lunar new year, uh, I think over half of our staff was away from, from, from mm -hmm. Shenzhen. As you know, the Shenzhen is a is very much an immigrant city. Like during so any major festival holidays, uh, it's an empty town. It's an empty town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like more than more than fifty percent of the population is away. So in our case, it's pretty much the same. We we, we have a staff force of thirty thousand, and so during the the sort of the, the the lunar new year period, uh, half of our staff were, were were away from from, from Shenzhen. So we had to we normally we would have reduced services anyway, but in this case, it also coincided with the with the, with, the, with the outbreak. So uh, we we were able to sort of like uh, do you know, do the do the rostering and scheduling uh, of, our, of our services. Uh, to match the, the, the passengers' requirement. Um, right now, as, as, as things started to become to get normal uh, towards the end of uh, end of March, beginning of April, uh, we're starting to see a gradual kind of upscale in terms of uh, passenger ship numbers. Uh, you know, in the, in, during the during morning peak, we're now we're now. 95, 90, 90, 95% back to normal. Mm -hmm. And so, but the norm peak hours is about 40% or 50% passenger share. So, uh, so we do see a, a big gap between the morning, the, the, the peak hours and, 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 the, and the regular period. Uh, what, so what we do is we use the, the, our dispatching system to, to dispatch our buses. And we, we the, 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 so like the, the, the what do you call it, uh, the frequency of the buses, the headways and all that. So we use our dispatch system to do that. Uh, we don't have any issue with the staff because uh, our, our staff are some kind of like, it's, it's sort of like the, throughout the different periods of, 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 of this pandemic, uh, the staff force that we're able to match the staff force uh, pretty, pretty much you know, in line with our, in our, with our operation. And I, I would also just add that uh, because we were actively monitoring what was happening in other cities and provinces in China in the beginning of the outbreak as well. So we had different scale of, um, you know, asking our employees from different regions to come back mm -hmm. at different times. So if you are from Hubei or if you were from Wuhan at the time, then you were probably asked to work from home for at least uh, the next one to two months uh, when the alert was uh, was more secure. And if you were from areas that were more remote and had no in fact no confirmed cases, uh, that you know there are different rules to put on. So I think it's more about having more precise um, monitoring on the situation uh, across the region and also just. Do, uh, taking the measures case by case for most of our employees. As I said before, you have a uh, sharing platform for the information, such as the QR code. 
so um, among the first uh, first company in China. So is the uh, is the informal share among all the first mm -hmm. company in China? Is there any alignment in in between? No, no, no. we actually yeah. we work quite independently because of. Um, mm -hmm. sort of a different mechanism in different cities. So as I mentioned earlier, how the routes were run and what the public transport um, operations were adjusted were based on how severely that city or that region was infected. So um, it's very much independently sort of uh, planned uh, by a city case. And for us, we did you know, share a lot of our experiences and we talk daily with sort of our counterparts in other cities as well, but the systems were not connected. The systems are connected within Shenzhen with all the public transport. Yeah, not, all outside the transport. not outside of Shenzhen. Not outside So we share, our, we share the whole QR code system is shared amongst all the public transport operators and all the sort of like, uh, uh, you know, in, in, Shenzhen, in the case of Shenzhen, I mentioned the beginning, there's three bus operators uh, with us being, we're, we're, uh, we are sort of right in the right in the center, and we we have the largest fleet. Uh, so we share information with the other two operators, and we also share information with with, with, the, with, the, with the metro operators, uh, uh, Sunjin Metro. Well, I see. So um, the last three questions. Um, so do you offer any mental health support? To uh yes we do uh in terms of the sort of like a, we have a 24 hour uh hotline and with with uh, with counselors uh and this is something that's ongoing anyway you know even during normal normal time, normal period we have a very robust uh, what we call employee assistance program mm -hmm. uh which we, which is a it's actually quite quite well known we've won a lot of awards even so sort of like we've won an award in chicago a few years ago, uh, so this is this is something that we have in, in place, anyways. And uh, and during the pandemic, uh, you know, like the, 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 our our labor union has uh, done a lot of uh, work in terms of supporting people who are sorry in, in isolation, supporting the family, uh, delivering food to the to the to, to the to the places where they're doing self isolation. Because so, not all, yeah, not all the. Not all the staff have their, you know, some of the staff are actually, uh, when they came back, they were in isolation within, within uh, the hotels or within the sort of like the staff quarter. You can't go, you can't leave the door, you can't leave the, you know, leave the room. So we were delivering food and delivering some uh, daily necessities. To, to, and a lot of this uh, through our vol volunteers uh, within the company. So um so second last question. So uh, from what from uh from what have been learned from the company COVID nineteen, so will there be any ideas trigger on any permanent changes on the design or features of the uh, design uh, for permanent become permanent features, okay? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think probably the the, the sanitization, the sanitization yeah. of the buses, yeah. And you know, maybe we, we we've been thinking about, you know, like, uh, we're, we're actually something that we're doing that previously, we, we've now installed all the solid, we've called uh, the temporary uh, screen yeah. between between the the, uh, the taxis and also the, the buses, between the cab, uh, the, the driver's cabin and, and the passengers uh, uh, areas. Uh, we now actually, what we've done now is, uh, we've just went for major procurement uh, to re retrofit all our buses with, with, with permanent screens. So uh, the the bus cabin uh, area will be will have a permanent kind of a, a driver's door. So this is something that we're doing. So uh, there's a one following question, a follow up question actually. So how might that affect your company's profitability? So will, will there be any affection? No. Yeah. So for um, we have seen around 50% drop in our revenue share from January to March. But our cost has actually also decreased by around 3%. That is actually because of the reduced services. 
So we had uh, applied for extra sort of subsidies from the government as we are, you know, major our majority shareholder is still the Shenzhen Municipal Government. Uh, second largest shareholder is the from, from Hong Kong. But um, we are still quite heavily subsidized uh, by the local government to keep our fares low. So I think they have also subsidized the taxi drivers, uh, metro services, and uh, bus companies as well, because all of us are quite severely impacted. But I think right now we are, we're observing our revenues back to uh, the normal, the, no the normal average uh, compared to last year. And on the taxi side, and this is just uh, on the bus operation side, that's it's a very much subsidized model in Shenzhen. But on the taxi side, it's pretty much a, like a, a market driven kind of uh, operation. So, what we've done is we've uh, given uh, all our drivers, we've, we've uh, reduced the, the monthly rental for them. Uh, so, that is something that we, we are out of our pocket mm -hmm. when we're reducing monthly rent, uh, rental. And But government is also giving uh, drivers incentive and subsidies. Mm -hmm. So extra salaries uh, for, extra them to salary come back. for them to come back to work. Yeah. Um, because uh, the taxi operation is much more severely impacted in compared with the, with the bus industry, uh, to, to the bus operation. Because as you know, as Holly just said uh, earlier, the taxi operation, the, the majority of the, the, the taxi trade is actually in the evening, uh, where people are going out to shop, you know, going out eating, going to get to restaurants and and and. and and bars, and also we're losing a lot of passengers uh, uh, because of the, the shutdown of the borders between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. So uh, a lot of as you as probably know, a lot of people when they come across the border from Hong Kong, first thing they do is just get on get on taxi. So we're losing a lot of uh, income from that from that side. So we're having to subsidize our taxi drivers in, by reducing uh, rental. Uh, in the first couple of months, we also reduced the, the charging cost for the taxis. But they're all electric taxis. We're reducing the charging costs, and we are also reducing. You know, they, they also receive uh, each uh, individual taxi drivers also receive incentives and subsidies from government uh, to encourage them to come back to work. So the last question is: So if um, drivers were concerned with the coronavirus, so any medical measures are provided or medical support to those uh, infected drivers? Um, actually, so in Shenzhen's case, the 463 confirmed cases in, in Shenzhen, all of their medical expenses were covered by the by the Shenzhen government. So, um, so and anyone that gets tested here, even if you don't live in Shenzhen, uh, actually the government pays for all the treatments. So that yeah. goes the same for our our staff and drivers as well. Yeah. We pay for all the tests. Yeah, so so we, we've we've actually done a lot of testing for yeah. particularly for all the staff that are returning from outside of Shenzhen. They, they, I think I think almost hundred percent of them have been tested. Yeah, and they, we pay for the, for the testing. For the testing. So that's the end of the seminar. Thank you so much again for Joe and Haley for your uh, for all of you joining the seminar. So I hope we will see you in next uh, next time next webinar. Until then, for my best wishes. Good luck, good health, and good night. Thank you and for thanks, having thanks us. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to everyone. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.